was one in a slalom. He has a giant slalom victory, and he has a combined victory. He can do it all in the world of skiing, and Bob was right when they have referred to him as Jean-Claude Keeley. Of course, Keeley was good in all three disciplines. It's a fast course. It's over two and a half miles long. They have been carrying speeds of over 70 miles per hour. Zerbringen is on the course. And Frank, you get a really good idea right from that shot of how steep it is right at the top. This turn and then three bumps. Very important up here and very hard to relax. We can see him. One, two, three. And there's the last one. Again, Zerbringen, like Fagini, will have a lot of fans here. They've come across the border from nearby Sun to cheer on this rising young superstar. And ordinarily, Frank, and see that bump right there? He took a lot of air. And a little bit faster, I think, than it has been in training. Ordinarily, number one is not a good starting position. But so there's so many to this, so I see it could be really working in Zerbergen's favor today. You're that, better without the max on the turns. That number one indicating that Zerbergen has the best time up in the top. Of course, he's the first racer down. We'll have an opportunity to compare other races with Zerbergen. Time up at the top. There'll be two intermediate spots that we'll be able to check the speed and the time. And Frank, this is his first downhill since Kispiel when he was injured. <laughs> Interesting enough, in his hotel room, he watched video. That's dedicated. Sir Brigham on the top, and you'll hear a large roar as he comes down closer to the finish line. A tremendous crowd here, and it's very difficult to get to Bormio. Okay, that traverse right through here was very important. Make your skis track. He almost lost his balance right through here, but he's still staying on his ski. Really, literally turned in the air, Bob, to catch himself. Well, as Bill Johnson mentioned, sometimes it's hard to see where the next turn is coming out of sections like that. Look at him, look at the speed, though. Again, keep in mind, they are traveling at speeds of upwards of 70 miles per hour. And it is very icy doing that. Right there, 82.849 miles per hour. They average a little over 20 miles an hour, but keep in mind, they start from a standing start in that start house. From me, okay. right on the edge of disaster at all points. Okay, we're going to sit down now through this very turny section, and this is very critical right through here. This is where Zerber gets to excel. Look at him, speed. Frank, he almost lost his outside Ooh, speed did. right there, but he pulled it right back. That's the knee that was injured, too, that left knee. Good shot as we look with the Leedsom camera. Zoom lens across the valley. Zerbergen needs to have a little rough run, but he keeps his skis going down the hill. Jeremy Zerbergen, 2.0668. Zerbergen crosses the finish line, and we'll have an idea how he did as the other racers come down. But this is the man. They should win four goals. Of course, he has to win here. Then he has a giant slot on the slalom, and, of course, the combine. He did have a little bit of a problem there, low on the course, Bob. Meanwhile, up at the top of the hill, an Austrian, Anton Steiner, 26 years old, Bob Piatti and I, in 1976 when he was the rising young superstar. He switched over to the technical part of skiing. Now he's back as a down racer. He saved the Austrians in Sarajevo. With oh, he's down. Right off that bump, Frank. He Ooh. just sat back. That was a tough fall, too. He does appear to be all right. We've seen him fall quite a bit in these big events, haven't we? And he is all right. Blew both those skis off. I started to say he got the bronze. Is that he is now out of the competition. Zerber again looking awfully good at the bottom of the mountain. And meanwhile, up at the top of the hill, we're looking at Peter Muller. He's a veteran Swiss racer, 27 years old. You might recall Sarajevo, silver medalist at Sarajevo behind Bill Johnson in the top five in the Olympics and World Championships since 1978. And he really does get up for the big ribbon. Well, you know what a downhill it needs. He's big and he's strong. He's a good athlete. And he's also very good in the turns. We can see that little bump seems to be kicking him back at the top. He's catching a lot of them up there at the top of the hill. I really think that this is one of the downhills who really could challenge Zerbergen because he won one of the training runs. He has a lot of experience. And he really could do well right through here. Look at him get down in that tuck right away. You think he's going to be in the top ten. He usually is. He has one second and one third. And he hasn't won, however, since the spring of 82. Peter Muller. Okay, remember, like Zerbergen, he's very good on the turns. Not bad up there. Only two one-hundredths of a second behind the time of Zerbergen up in the top. And Muller of Switzerland has a good run. The question here right now, Frank, is how much have turns deteriorated with the races have gone in front of him? Have they gotten any chattery? Have they gotten any worse? And that's what we're going to find out right here. That's a key, I think, for Muller. The guys glare across the snow. Beautiful run. Two and a half miles. Carrying speeds upward 80 miles per hour, averaging over 70 miles per hour. Here's Peter Muller now working through the middle of the course. Okay, he's got, this is the traverse right through here. He seems to be tracking well through here. He looks like he got a little bit low in some of the turns just before that, though. There's Peter a couple Muller of really now. important turns in here. Staying tight to the gates. 
He's skiing well. We'll have an opportunity to compare his second intermediate intermediate time with that observed very close up at the top, only two hundredths of a second off. And if fitness helps on this particular oh. downhill, and I think it does because there's no chance to rest, it should really help you. As a matter of fact, he owns a fitness club. He's in great shape, and of course, his experience, as we mentioned, should help him. He lost a lot to Zerbriggen through the middle of the course. Well, I really think that those turns are getting very chattery. I think it's going to be tougher for each racer. Makes Zerbriggen look better and better. And of course, Michael Mayer caught the attention of the Italian crowd. There are a lot of Swiss here. Those cowbells are mostly all Swiss fans. And keep in mind, Switzerland is just over the border, just a few miles from here. And there are a lot of Swiss racing fans here. Running time on the right of Peter Muller of Switzerland. And you'll see Zerbergen's time come up on the left. And it's looking better and better for Zerbergen. A little bit there. Zerbergen, the final few meters. And he moves into second place. He made up tremendous time to move into second place. Zerbergen now lead, but Muller is in second place. And Franz Heinzer is... Hard house will be Doug Lewis from Middlebury, Vermont. He's 21 years old, five foot nine, and has really started to come on. He's skied well, 17 kind of points, top 10 finishes. He's had a couple of them. He was ninth at Val Gardena, 10th at Kitzbühel, and oh, that Frank, was perfect on the bump, absolutely perfect. Right oh, there. and in contrast to Hurtliner that we saw a moment ago. And you talk about aggressiveness. He's just bubbling with confidence right now. He's had some good results this year. He can't wait. Look at all that one. He took a little bit too much air right there, but as I said, he just can't wait for each downhill to come out. He's just ready for him. He feels very good about it. That, of course, is Zerbriggen's time on the left, and we'll get a chance to see how Doug Lewis is doing up on the top against the time of Zerbriggen. Not bad. Well, he was a little bit slow. He lost almost a half a second up there, but keeping in mind that the one thing that he does very well is turn on those high-speed turns. He's an outstanding athlete. He could be very good down here. You heard him earlier saying that he liked this hill. He's trained well on this hill. He had a six in the combined down earlier when you were talking with him, Bob. One of the problems that he does have, though, starting so far down on the turns, though, it's not get a little chattery because of all the earlier races, so that could be a problem for him. He was 24th at Sarajevo, and then he really came on strong last year. He had an 8th place finish at Whistler Mountain, and he's skiing. Well, he's still trying to stay in that tuck all the time, and that's important. To him. But sometimes you don't want to stay in it too much and kind of <laughs> ruin the turns. You've got to get through those turns right. Pretty <laughs> wishful thinking, but they're already oh. taking pictures of Gerberg at the bottom of the hill, and Doug Lewis has a good run going. Look at the speed he's carrying, over 82 miles an hour, almost 83 miles per hour. Frankie's picked up a lot of time down there. Now he's 1.3 seconds behind. Here he Keeping comes. him to Zerberg, it wasn't that great on the bottom part of the course. This is really coming down through here, where Lewis could be very strong. He's put in the turns. Lewis now into those final turns, and then it'll be the shush to the finish line. It is getting a little bit rough on the course right now, but it does bother him. Very good in that particular bump. Look at him, look, look at him, how low he is in his time. Zerberg, it's time on the left. Here comes Doug Lewis on the east third place. place. Doug Lewis has moved into third place, and that should get him a bronze medal. Great, bronze, great result for Lewis. <laughs> how is he happy? Well, Schonauer, give him a hug. Ski coach. <laughs> look at him, look up at that leaderboard. Doug Lewis is in third place. He should bronze medal. He will get a bronze medal, Bob. And almost as stunning is the fact that he's 1,400ths of a second out of a gold medal, only three one hundredths of a second.